One of the things I'd really like to see before I die are the Northern Lights. But for now, I'm gonna have to settle with painting the Aurora Borealis. So join me as I take you through my step-by-step -step process of creating this comic book cover for Superman Endless Winter. Going in, I knew this was going to be a design heavy cover and less labor intensive on the illustration side. So color design is going to play a big part in creating contrast and pulling the reader's eye towards a certain focal point on this cover. I start by using a mirror tool to figure out where the center point of the image is. I'm going to be using a single vanishing point to draw the reader's eye towards the center image. This is where Superman is going to be flying from. It will also serve as the perspective for all the creatures on the ground. Using a polygon tool, I create a grid for me to follow. At the top of the menu bar, you're going to find this cog. And within that cog are the settings that you can use to create a perspective grid using the polygon tool. This is a standard tool in Photoshop and you can use this to create these guidelines. You still need to know the general rules of perspective to use this effectively. And I find that laying this under my drawing allows me to fully realize the depth of the environment of the scene. I'll make future videos diving deeper into some of the tools that I use in Photoshop. But for now, let's move on to the next stage. The initial idea for this cover was to have Superman flying from the reader's point of view and into action. And part of the reason why I wanted to do that was to flood the sky with this super, super bright red. And it was gonna make a nice contrast with the sky. Now, my editor suggested to flip the camera and, and put it on the other side and have Superman flying towards the reader. The reason why I was kind of drawn to the initial idea of the previous one with the cape was more of a design element and I wasn't really thinking of the human connection. But once my editor brought this up, it was it was a no brainer. On covers and any images, it's always more interesting to have a face in the image. I think this it's just a way for the audience to connect to a character. Now, I still wanted to create a sense of scale. So rather than having a large Superman, which, you know, I think is what most artists will probably be drawn to doing because you'll get to draw a nice, cool, large image of Superman. Uh, I wanted to keep him small because I wanted the, the scale and the enormity of the challenge he's about to fly into to remain intact. What I love about the Northern Lights is it's taking these two elements of cool and warm. When I refer to cool and warm, I'm using a simple rule of dividing the color family under those two banners with blues and greens in the cool family and reds and yellow in the warm. Using these two families of colors to complement each other, you, you can get a lot of color contrast and separation in your artwork without even using shadows yet. Now, when you mix those two primaries and get colors like purple, you're now straddling the line with a color tone that can work with either one. A huge part of the reason why I wanted to use the Northern Lights as the backdrop for this cover is to really make Superman pop. The brushes I'm using to make these streaks are two things. For the clouds in the background, I'm using this pastel brush. It's part of the Kyle Webster brush pack, which is available to you if you're a Photoshop uh, Creative Cloud subscriber. So it's free, I highly recommend downloading it. I actually used to buy his brushes before he partnered up with Photoshop, but now if you have Photoshop, it's free. For the streaks, I'm using the standard round soft brush. This is your typical airbrush. And what I'm doing is I'm holding down shift to create those streaks that are running vertically. And for the stars, 
Again, Kyle Webster brush pack for the win. These are splatter brushes. As you can see, the patterns are becoming very apparent. So what I'm doing is I lower its opacity and I create a masking layer on top and erase certain elements of it to de-emphasize its saturation and push it further back because I don't want it to be overwhelming the foreground of the image. I then paint a little bit more saturated colors in order to really make this thing pop. The thing that's so beautiful about the Aurora Borealis is the saturation of colors and the vibrancy of it. Uh, it's 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 strange to know that it's a natural occurrence, uh, and yet uh, it's just one of the great wonders of the world that I, I I would love to see it one day. Anyways, back to this piece. I had a few more vertical streaks. This is meant to really add and sell the motion of Superman swooping down and into action. I also add a few atmospheric lighting at the bottom to separate what will be the foreground from the background. My favorite Superman stories have always involved Clark going back to Smallville. Growing up in the city, I've always been drawn to the pastoral settings of the Kent family farm. I think there's something epic about the massive vistas of cornfields and rolling. Now, by contrast, the Fortress of Solitude is not only cold temperature wise, it's also cold with regards to its color palette. Next, I wanna add a glowing effect to the stars. All you have to do is simply right click the layer with the stars on it, and under the layer style, there's a tab for outer glow. Tweaking some of the settings, I set the parameters for how wide that gradient light that's coming out of the stars. Now, because the stars that I used, uh, or rather the brush that I use is a splatter brush, it's coming off a little too thick. So I have to find a, a smaller brush that is a little bit more subtle than the last one. I actually found this brush from an artist's website who was generous enough to share her brushes of clouds and stars. If I find the link, I'll make sure to put it down below. With the background out of the way, it's now time to refocus back on penciling the foreground. Now, if you've watched any of my other videos, you know that I typically go in a very orderly fashion from layouts, pencil, inks, and colors, but I felt it was really important to capture the essence of the atmosphere of the scene that this is taking place in. The Northern Lights is just such a striking image and I felt that having it finished before I moved on to what is typically my next step really set the mood for the piece. I'm not a digital painter but I know this method is used a lot by digital painters and traditional painters and to me it makes a lot of sense and this might be something I apply more in the future. To get this powdery look, I'm using a bunch of different brushes that have a slight gradient to them. By setting it to dissolve, rather than the color slowly fading in, what it's doing is kind of this stippling effect, which is perfect for creating this powdery look. The blue use of the environment really put a lot of emphasis on Superman's red cape and his emblem. It really makes him stand out of the environment. I try to keep the flatting stage as close to drawing as possible, so I don't use a lasso tool and I have a tendency to use the pencil tool instead. The reason why I use it is that it has 100% opacity on its edges so it's easy to fill it up using the paint bucket tool. I once heard Jim Lee talk about the secret to drawing the Superman emblem. I, I believe he was referencing John Byrne who compared it to drawing two fishes swimming towards each other. It's very subtle but you can see it there. I typically use three different kinds of layers for my rendering. Uh, one set to screen for the highlights or sometimes color dodge. And for the shadows, I either use multiply or a normal layer set to a lower opacity. I go into a deeper dive in how I do my rendering in another video. I'll link it up above. But right now I'm doing a simple top down shadow with a lot of heavy shadows underneath. When my editors pitched me the concept of the cover and they told me it was about this endless winter storyline, I figured I could lean heavily into using snow and applying a lot of negative space. What I didn't realize was the amount of monsters I was actually supposed to draw for this cover. So remember when I said at the beginning that this wasn't going to be a labor intensive cover? Well, I was wrong. I'm going to keep the inking fairly simple and minimal because what I want to do is apply a clipping mask layer to the inking layer in order to turn the line work into white. I really want to sell the frosty nature of these creatures so that white line will come in handy later on once I apply it when I've finished all of the inks.
Every now and then I encounter a cover that I assume will be easy to execute and I become overconfident. A little tricky. Yeah, no, nothing's stopping us. And I find myself falling flat on my face whenever I make those assumptions. Oh. This cover was deceptively simple in its concept, but laborious in its execution. All of these creatures coming towards Superman was really daunting for me to draw. I haven't drawn big crowd scenes like this in a long time, but the scale and visual magnitude of what Superman has to face really helps illustrate his unwavering determination. Oh. Uh. For the inks, I'm taking a clean and lean simple approach to rendering Superman. I've always found that he's a wholesome character and taking this approach really helps accentuate that aspect of his personality. And of course, more splatter. But in this case, we're going to use it for snow. I'm also going to add a radial blur to it, which you can find in the filter section of Adobe Photoshop. Using the zoom effect, I'm going to have the snow trail towards Superman, using a vanishing point that we used earlier on. This will bring the reader's eye towards the focal point of the image, so no matter how small Superman is, our eyes are always leading towards him. Using the Lazy Nozumi plugin, I'm also going to add some radial lines coming from Superman to really sell that he's bursting towards the readers. Uh, uh, we did it! We did it, Octavia! We made it up! So let me flip the script on you guys. What are the places or natural phenomenons that you'd really like to see and check off your bucket list? Comment down below. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Hopefully you guys found this video helpful, and if you did, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time. Go run! <laughs>